Hi there. Today's video is going to upset some people, but I think it is absolutely essential that I tell everyone what I'm about to say. Many people find it interesting to talk about the last book in the Bible called Revelation, which reveals things about the Antichrist, the end times, and the number 666. What do these things mean? An interesting thing to note, the Islamic people, or the Muslims, like to consider the holiest number 666. It's kind of strange, isn't it? Reading from the last book in the Bible called Revelation, chapter 13, verse 11. I now saw another beast. This one came out of the ground. It had two horns like a lamb, but spoke like a dragon. It worked for the beast, whose fatal wound had been healed, and it used all its authority to force the earth and its people to worship the beast. It worked mighty miracles, and while people watched, it even made fire come down from the sky. The second beast fooled people on earth by working miracles for the first one. Then it talked them into making an idol in the form of the beast that did not die after being wounded by a sword. It was allowed to put breath into the idol so that it could speak. Everyone who refused to worship the idol of the beast was put to death. All people were forced to put a mark on their right hand or their forehead. Whether they were powerful or weak, rich or poor, free people or slaves, they all had to take this mark or else they could not buy or sell anything. This mark stood for the name of the beast and for the number of its name. You need wisdom to understand the number of the beast. But if you are smart enough, you can figure this out. Its number is 666, and it stands for a person. Let's talk about this number, 666, and how it applies to Islam, Allah, the false prophet Muhammad, and everything to do with the Quran. Here you have pictures of the Greek symbols translated in the Bible as 666. This gold symbol on the left is Arabic for Allah, or in the name of Allah. When this symbol is turned and mirrored, you will find the Greek 666 in both Islam and in the name for Allah. There's a man named Walid Shobat, who was a former PLO terrorist, now a Christian evangelist, who saw this Greek symbol, now translated as 666. However, when he read it, he read it in Arabic as Bismallah, which is the character for in the name of Allah. He couldn't tell the difference. Some people might wonder, what do I have against Islam? Well, let's talk about Satan. Satan's whole thing is that he hates you and wants you to go to hell for your sins. Jesus Christ, God in the flesh, came to die for our sins. We owed a debt to God and Jesus paid it for us. However, if we refuse his payment, we have to go to hell and pay for our sins for eternity. So, all Satan has to do to get you to go to hell is make you reject Jesus Christ. It is written on the side of the Dome of the Rock Mosque, which is a famous site for Muslims. On the side it is inscribed, Far be it removed from his transcendent majesty that he, Allah, should have a son. Doesn't that sound like Satan saying, Jesus never came, God can't have a son, it never happened? It sounds exactly like what Satan would do. Not only that, but think about this. What other religion do you know that has in their own scripture denials against other religions? It acknowledges the other religions and says, no, that's not true. Judaism doesn't do that. Christianity doesn't do that because Christianity is the fulfillment of Judaism. But then you have Islam saying, no, they're wrong. Never happened. No, don't believe that. It's wrong. In the Gospels, it is recorded that God himself, the Father, declared that Jesus was his beloved Son. Let's look at Matthew chapter 3, verse number 16. So, Jesus was baptized, and as soon as he came out of the water, water, the sky opened, and he saw the Spirit of God coming down on him like a dove. Then a voice from heaven said, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. See, Islam has to deny this, the very declaration of God, which is recorded not just in the, Matthew, in the Gospel of Matthew. They have to deny this, because if it's true, that means Islam's not true. And, well, the Bible just so happens to have been written hundreds of years before Islam was even invented by the false prophet Muhammad. So, who are you going to believe, God or some illiterate Arab man? I'm going to read something a friend of mine sent me, and I'm not going to list his name because I don't want to put him in any danger. I fully acknowledge that I'm actually endangering myself because I'm dealing with Satanists and they like killing people. God declares in Proverbs 8.36, All those who hate God love death.
I'll make that on the cock on it. So, um, I do this willingly, and uh, if you guys want to kill me, I don't advise you to do it, because you will be punished for it, but hey, we got to do what we got to do. Well, according to Christianity, the Antichrist brings the seven-year peace treaty with Israel. According to Islam, the Messiah Imam Mahdi brings the seven-year peace treaty. He will ride a white horse and conquer nations, which is what the first beast in the book of Revelation does. He rides a white horse and conquers to conquer. The false prophet alongside the beast is the false Jesus that Imam Mahdi will have at his side. He will break all crosses. Right now, Islam is the fastest growing religion in the world, and they are slow slowly taking over Europe and Russia. They will take over the world because their Messiah will bring miracles that will deceive almost everyone. Those who do not convert will be beheaded. Sound familiar? Also in Daniel, it tells us that the Antichrist will change the laws in the time. That is what Islam does. They make everyone adhere to the Islamic law and they have a different calendar than we do. The book of the Quran and the Prophet Muhammad is 666. It is Islam's holy number. It is also the time when their Messiah will be born on the sixth day of the sixth month of the sixth hour or something like that. But basically you get the idea. Also Muslims buy a lot of companies and they make it very clear that they won't be doing business with anyone who is not Muslim. They could not buy or sell lest they had the mark. Sound familiar? The mark is a spiritual mark. Just like Jesus followers have the mark of seven 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 on their foreheads the Islamic people will have six 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 on their foreheads and hands okay let's summarize everything we've looked at so far basically Islam believes that they have a Messiah like figure coming and they sure do however Jesus warned us that that would be the Antichrist every single trait that Jesus attributed to this Antichrist from Satan is attributed in the Quran to the Islamic Messiah they believe in this Messiah, but Jesus told us that would be the Antichrist. Jesus even said this Antichrist would deceive the whole world, and Muslims are so proud, they say, look at our religion, we're the fastest growing religion in the world. Yeah, well, it just so happened Jesus said that the deception would be over the whole world. I wouldn't be too proud of that if I were you. I think I've made my point. Okay, I'm going to end on this statement. All the prophets before Jesus, Isaiah especially, said that God would incarnate himself in the flesh and die for our sins. Jesus Christ, Yehoshua HaMashiach in the Hebrew, died for our sins and is God in the flesh and lives today to make intercession for us and forgive us for our sins. If you do not repent of your evil religion, you Muslims, you will burn in hell. I don't want you to burn in hell. I'm making this video for you. I'm not trying to point fingers and say, you're evil, you're going to hell. We're all evil. We've all done things wrong, but Jesus died for our sins, and Islam denies that because Satan created your religion to deny the truth about God. You must repent. On a happier note, I'm going to end this video with some Iranian television aimed at children, which, well, you'll see for yourself. I'm a Jew. You think I'm going to teach my kids that Muslims are apes and pigs? No. I'm going to teach my kids that Muslims are misguided Satanists who need to be prayed for. A lot. Throughout history, Satan has tried to destroy the Jews through Pharaoh and Hitler and now the Muslims. The reason Satan hates the Jews is because Jesus came from them. Now, Muslims will claim to love Jesus, but Jesus was a Jew, you hypocrites.